Aren't these the cutest, tiniest colored pencils you've ever seen? A while back, I was shopping for a birthday gift at Grand Rabbit's Toy Shop. It's this fabulous Colorado store that sells quality toys, and I found this miniature set of colored pencils for just $7.99, and since I'm a sucker for art supplies, especially cute ones, I just had to buy it. There have been a couple of other YouTube channels that have demonstrated this set, but I was curious to see if they are actually functional, and since I love to combine loose watercolor washes with more detailed layers of colored pencils, I thought this would be a lot of fun to try out on a miniature painting. This set is made in Japan and comes with 12 pencils inside a compact case with a sturdy plastic cover that swings open, and it even includes a mini eraser and a sharpener. Do these actually work? We're gonna find out today. I chose to do a tiny flower painting with lots of colors in order to fully explore all 12 colored pencils in the set. The watercolors I'm using are yellow ochre, cadmium red light, ultramarine blue, Hansa yellow light, burnt sienna, and turquoise blue. And these are all Holbein and Daniel Smith colors that I squeezed out of the tube into this tiny metal travel palette from Cheap Joe's Art Supply. My paper is the Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press Miniature Pad. It's only two and a half by three and three quarter inches. I also needed some tiny brushes. Now, Right after watching this, you can check out this video to learn more about the best brushes for painting tiny. Right off the bat, the thing I struggled with most with this pencil set was just removing them from the case. But once I finally had a hold of my tiny red colored pencil, I did a loose sketch of this red rose in the center and then used the orange pencil to draw these smaller peach colored roses. I lightly sketched on some green leaves using both the light and dark green pencils. The pencils are surprisingly good quality. The pencil core is just the perfect blend of a smooth and buttery but firm texture. Now with the sketch done, the next step was to paint some loose watercolor washes on as a first layer. Really quick, I should mention this is a watercolor channel and watercolor is my main medium. So if you love watercolor, hit that subscribe button right now. But colored pencils were actually my first love. When I was 14 years old, I got a summer job and saved all of my money so I could buy the biggest set of Prismacolor colored pencils that I could find. And though I rarely use my colored pencils anymore, once in a while I love to combine watercolor and colored pencil. You just get a great juxtaposition of loose and tight, and it's fun to play with focal point and texture using these two fabulous media. Now if you decide to mix your media like this, it's important to understand the qualities that each one brings to your artwork. Using watercolor to get down the first wash of color is a super fast and efficient way to start. You can use a slightly larger brush and spread out some soft, wet layers, giving you a wonderful base of color to work with. Now, if you were only using colored pencil, it could take hours to fill a small section of paper with flat color. You're working with just a tiny little pencil tip after all. So it's best to start with the watercolor and then layer the pencils over the top. Since colored pencil has a waxy consistency, it can act as a resist and the watercolor will not adhere to it. So there's definitely a proper order when combining the two. Start with your watercolor and finish with the colored pencils. I used my Trakel size two synthetic Kalinske staple brush to paint on all of these under layers. I used cadmium red light for the red rose and a combination of turquoise blue, ultramarine, and splashes of lemon yellow for the green and blue foliage. Once that was dry, I set aside my watercolors and finished the painting with my miniature colored pencils. In order to easily switch between colors, I found it was easiest to just dump out all the pencils on my desk. Since the red rose is the clear focal point, I spent the majority of my time here adding bits of color, light and shadow to the rose, tightening up the details of each petal. I used pink, red, and purple to deepen the colors, and the white pencil was really effective for soft highlights along the edges of those velvety petals. The black pencil was a perfect rich dark for the deepest shadows. I also added some details to the peach colored roses using red, orange, and yellow, and added some contrast to the background with some blue, black, and brown. I really loved the loose look of the watercolor in that initial wash, and I didn't want to mess with it too much, so most of my details with the pencils stayed in the flowers. Because I was pressing pretty hard on these pencils, especially the red and black ones, I half expected them to crumble and break, but they held up really well. The sharpener worked great too. My hands did not cramp up, and in general, I was surprised by both the ease and the comfort of these doll-sized pencils. I could actually imagine taking these with me on an excursion and using them for quick plein air sketches. 
Although, let's be honest, my kids will probably end up stealing them. They are irresistible. So there's the finished miniature painting. It took me about 40 minutes from start to finish. When you look at it from a certain angle, you can definitely see the waxy sheen of the pencils. But all in all, I was really happy with how this little experiment turned out. These adorable mini colored pencils are available on Amazon, but they're actually cheaper to purchase through the Grand Rabbits Toy Shop website. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check those out. Please leave me a comment. Do you think these would make a great gift? Are there any other supplies you'd like me to test out? I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.